Hi again, I'm Tony Perez with Opticus Design and uh, thank you for joining us for uh, session three of six about form-based zones. Um, we had talked about what form-based uh, codes are and are not and why they came to be in session one. And in session two, we talked about the regulating plan and uh, how it differs from a conventional zoning map. And today we are talking about the zones in a form-based code and um, how they work and what they contain. So looking back from session number two, we talked about the regulating plan and that's where we're getting today. The zones, um, the form-based zones go on to the regulating plan. And as we mentioned, um, you know, the, the color um, intensity reflects the intensity of lot coverage, the intensity of uses, the, the relative um, height of buildings um, and the role of of what is on those lots. And you can see the darker colors in the gray and the blue are, are the, the largest and most intensely used buildings. And then the lighter purple um, is, are the, the smallest and least intensely used buildings, um, houses in this case. So each of these colors represents a physical environment uh, with physical characteristics, as, as opposed to the conventional zoning approach, which simply looks at height and uses, uh, this, this 3D uh, zoning map, if you will, uh, starts to um, indicate the intentions of the community form uh, through the map, as well as all, a lot of other things here that we'll talk about. So taking a step from that regulating plan into, um, into the, the types of zoning districts that are, that are on the map, uh, starts to show you the intentions by when you uh, when you map a certain zoning district, the kind of physical intentions, physical outcomes that are meant by that that color on that map, as you can see here with two examples of a neighborhood zone and a main street zone, and you can see that it's about a lot more than just uh, overall height, as a conventional zoning tends to to myopically um, uh, focus on. It's about um, the distance uh, between buildings, the distance from the buildings to the sidewalk, how the buildings uh, shape the public realm, uh, the fact that there is a public realm, um, the length and width of those buildings, uh, and, and all, a lot of other characteristics that shape uh, the physical environment. And so that intended physical character uh, is then expressed in an individual zoning district through, um, through the intended form, as you see here on the, um, on the right hand side, these, these characteristics that summarize what this zoning district is about. And so each of these zoning districts in a form-based code, at least the ones that we prepare, have this link between the vision and the actual numbers and in, in the standards. So on the right-hand side, that's an intense statement that is very, very different from the kind of uh, intense statements in your conventional zoning code. And I would encourage you to, to look at them in your, your existing zoning code and compare them. Um, the statement at the bottom talks about the intended uh, physical character when it's all said and done, when you, when you put all these things together. Uh, and, and then there's a statement about general uses in, in this, in this um, particular zoning district. But at, at the top of that, um, that information is the desired form, which talks about building size and whether the buildings are attached or detached, uh, their width, their, their footprint, um, how big the setbacks are, and, and sometimes people say, well, wait, there, there aren't a lot of numbers in here and, that, and that's intentional. It's talking about the qualitative aspects of physical character. And then you can get into the actual numbers in the standards. Um, so imagine that the information that I just showed you is on the preceding page to these pages. And so that is a great link between the vision, the policy and the actual regulations. Um, and so that that is a, uh, a new piece of information that conventional zoning does not contain that often um, can be problematic for, for, um, for some planning departments that, that don't want that kind of uh, um, information. They only want the regulatory information, but uh, we find it very helpful. And, and most of the time, the planning departments see it as, as very instructive as well. So that link provides a um, uh, uh, connection to the actual standards that generate that physical character that we've been talking about through those images and through those qualitative uh, statements. And now you have standards for 
uh, lot width and lot depth and what fits on those lots and how tall the buildings can be and uh, are there required step backs on upper stories or not? Uh, how tall does the ground floor have to be? Uh, what can happen in the ground floor as opposed to upper floors? Uh, how close does the setback or the building have to be in the setback or what is identified here on the right hand side of these pages is, is the, the facade zone, meaning in that uh, striped band there on the front and side street of that lot uh, is where the building needs to be placed in order to shape the public realm as expected in this zoning district and of course parking standards. So we've been talking about the uh, form-based zones and uh, what they contain and um, the kind of information that they provide. But let's take a step back and look at the system that is being applied um, to organize those zones and put them on the ground. That's the system that we call the transect. Um, and that's the organizing principle of many, but not all form-based codes. And the idea here is, um, born out from biology. Um, this tool uh, invented by Duane Plater Zyber uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, was um, adapted from um, biological studies and from Ian McCarg's work with design with nature. And so um, this idea, it extends from strictly nature into rural and into, um, into areas that, that can make cities. And that's why this tool was invented. To, only, to not only talk about preserving nature, but also to talk about instructively and intentionally how to build cities. And so the area of this spectrum that applies to the area we're talking about in Santa Rosa in the missing middle study is in this area of the spectrum. Um, and as you think about applying that in reality, uh, here are examples from other places in the country, not necessarily Santa Rosa, um, but that reflect this character uh, and you can see that the spectrum applied here. Um, and then this T4, T5 area is where we're talking about in here in town. And so applying this to my hometown again that I've used uh, a couple of times in the series, you can see that the system, uh, the people in my town don't use the system. You can apply the system to recognize different physical character that exists. So you can see the T2 in the country. You can see the T3 neighborhoods and the, the T4, um, is there's a neighborhood at the T4 level and there's a little uh, main street at the T4 level as well. And moving uh, into uh, maybe a, an area that you might know better, uh, Carmel by the sea. Uh, I love showing this example because again, they don't use the transect there, but you can apply the transect to recognize the existing physical character. Everybody knows that that beautiful main street on Ocean Avenue, that's in the middle of the screen, that is at the T4 level. Uh, and it's identified as a T4 MS, T4 Main Street, and then you can see the T3 neighborhoods and the T4 neighborhoods and the nature out there in the ocean. So applying that, um, that idea, the concept of the transect to Santa Rosa, uh, this is, this is uh, our preliminary observation of how that um, system applies to the existing conditions. And then uh, lastly here, you know, we use this analogy of the recording uh, engineer's sound deck as a tool to coordinate uh, specific outcomes in, in, a, in an intentional way uh, as, as an engineer would, would use in a, in a recording studio for, for a group or, or, or different musicians. And so um, the idea here is that uh, conventional zoning regulates um, street right-of-ways, regulates signage, it regulates buildings, not specifically, but um, buildings generally, and then it highly regulates uses. And so you can see here that, uh, again, using the analogy of the soundboard, uh, it only covers half of the amount of, of topics that really are available and important to regulate compared to the form-based approach, which um, covers the spectrum of the board and even additional items that you might identify. Thanks very much for being with us today. And um, uh, we just appreciate your time and look forward to your questions and comments. Thanks.